Hi folks, thanks for joining me for this week's river fly tutorial. What you see in the vise is a little fly to entice the grayling up, even on the coldest of days you can still tempt a fish to the dry. So without further ado, let's get into it. In the vise then is a Hanak H130 barbless hook. This is a fine wire hook, it's at size 12 and it's in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is the Sempify Nano Silk. This is at 12 volt and it's obviously black. First thing I'm going to do then is get quite a bit of wax onto my thread. And start at the back of the eye and run a layer of thread down the shank to approximately where a barb would be on a hook. Then I can take away my rat's tail. Now, the, uh, the tailing I'm going to be using is Coq de Leon. As you can see, uh, I'm a little shy of it, but I haven't got much left, so I'm going to make do with what I've got. It's, it's just the tips of the feathers here. So I'm going to try and take off about half a dozen and then dress it up to the hook, nice long tail, half of that length and then I can come in, secure it and just check that I've got it where I want it before coming down to again where a barb would be on a hook. Next I'm going to tie in my rib. Now what I'm using for my rib is simply some UTC thread. So this is the yellow, it's at 140 and I've already taken off a short section. Now what I've done with this thread is I've treated it with wax as I would tying thread uh, and it just makes it a wee bit easier to work with. So I'm going to tie that in next. He says it's not wanting to go. There we go. And then again, come back to the base of the fly. Now for the body of this, I know I'm going to get some stick because it isn't easy to find. Now basically this is a, a heron wing and you can't buy it. You've got to go scavenging on the river banks for this. And uh, But there's lots of herons around in the UK anyway, so you can always find a feather or two. I've got uh, this one here, which I've I've been using for a while. Now I've taken uh, three or four plumes of that. If you haven't got heron, you can use pheasant tail or uh, duck or whatever else you'd like, but I just find the heron gives a very pleasing look and it seems to work really well for the fish. So that's good enough for me. If it means trawling the banks at the back of every heron I see flying over, it's worth it. So I've caught that in. Next, I'm going to grab the end of it with my hackle pliers. And bring it up my body. It's a fairly robust uh, fibre actually, so that's one of the other reasons I really like working with it. Um, you're not worried about it snapping so much. And... Uh, it gives that really pleasing effect on the body. Now, uh, there's another fly called the Oppo. I think it's a Jeremy Herman. Wrong. Jeremy Lucas pattern, uh, which is very effective for trout. And I'll stick a wee information bar up if you want to have a wee look at that. I have done a, a version of it on, on the channel already, so it'd be worth having a look. I've just secured that in and a couple of turns in front and I can take away my waist. Then I can bring my rib up. I don't want dead close turns really. So about four turns is what you're looking for. Four, and then I'm not worried about this last one because that's going to be covered up by the head of the fly. The wing, should I say the wing. So I've caught that in 
and then I can come in with my snips and take that away. Next then I'm going to add my wing. Now what I've done is I'm going to use some of the trout line and this one's the, the Campbell Tan. Now it's not particularly long CDC but I don't need that for this wing. Now I've already taken four or five plumes out and I've married up the tips like so. And what I'm going to do is dress it up to the fly and I want it to come slightly beyond the body uh, just beyond the, the, uh, the bend of the hook there as you can see. So I'm going to hold that in place, swap hands and just get a couple of turns in there. Make sure it sits on top of the shank. To stop it moving about, if you get a couple of turns in front, you can then come in and remove your waist. You can lock that in place. Now what I want to do with my thread is get it in behind that wing. Because I want this to be kicked up and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use some dubbing. Now my normal uh, dubbing that I use for this is the Andrew Scruffy dubbing which is nat natural boosted. Uh, I use it on quite a lot of my flies, I just really like it. But he sent me something recently uh, and it's, it's done with opossum and he's naturally boosted opossum. Now I'm not sure at the time of screening if this will be available to buy but it's coming very very soon. So again I've already taken a, a little pinch out the packet and as you can see it's got a scruffy dubbing written all over it really, a little flecks of blue, red, yellow and what I'm going to do is open myself up a dubbing loop with this thread. So I'll just come in with my needle in behind Everything seems to be hard work today. <laughs> I don't know why. So I've split the thread and I've stuck in my little bit of dubbing. It doesn't need a great deal. And then I can spin that up. Make sure it's nice and tight in there. You don't want it all falling out when you start picking away at it. Now I'm just going to hold it up so you can see, as you can see, it's quite thick here and I don't want all that bulk, so I'm just going to strip it out quite harshly actually, so that it's nice and thin. But what the opossum does is uh, it just gives an amazing effect for these smaller flies. Now I'm tying this in a size 12, mostly for demonstration purposes, it's much better tied in size 14 and 16, much smaller sizes. Getting several wraps in behind the wing, which is going to allow that to stand up. And then my last few wraps, I'm going to just bring in front, like so. Then a little bit of UV resin onto my thread and I'd say the good old whip finish tool but I'm still uh, I'm still not convinced even though I've been using it now in my videos for a while I'm, I'm just not overly convinced I'm getting any more benefit than I was when uh, I was finishing by hand but there you go that's maybe just me so just uh, Cure that off, and although this is a size 12, I'd probably take that. Uh, this will probably go into my still water box if I'm honest. Uh, on the river, I prefer it much smaller, but it's a it's a nice little fly, and the grayling seem to really like it. So that's why I thought I'd share it with you at this time.
Thanks very much for watching. I hope you got something out of that, even if it was the using thread for rib just to keep the weight down rather than putting a a, a metal ribbon. It's it's a great wee tip that a little bit of thread makes lovely ribbon. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about clicking the button and I'll see you all next time.